Franco Cholina away from home. And with the United boosted by the return of former son Jimmy Patikas. Another of the big tests which are becoming routine for big lines. It's again Mike Cockrell at the microphone. Milicic wide right, Patikas in the middle. And that was a foul by Jason Dunn on Ante Milicic. Milicic with control of the ball, showed the sideline by Dunn and a little bit clumsy that tackle from the Canberra defender. So it's a free kick in a dangerous situation as far as Canberra are concerned. Over the ball is Moric. He dummies over the ball and it's swung in there by Gantz. The header there by Jim Patikas. Almost a dream start for Patikas. The header down, a good save in the end. It was the free kick floated in by Gentsch and that was going goalward. But it needed a good reaction save from Mortone. Jimmy and Patikas. he did it. Jimmy Patikas, Mike, I was just about to say, on, on set pieces, he was always very good in the air. And, uh, and, and you saw he didn't sort of get away from his mark, he just went over the top of him. So a corner to Sydney United, Gentsch over the ball. Towards the back post, this time the keeper will get there, Steve Mortone. A good strong take by the Canberra number 22, the goalkeeper. He has been one of their most consistent players in recent weeks. Morich away from Wade. Ennis finds Gensch. Gensch involved in a lot of the play early on. Wide right there is Drillich. Drillich against Paul D. Cuts it back to Ennis. Good ball there. Ennis onto his left foot. The low cross will find Poppet. It's Patikas, in fact, with a shot on the turn. So Jim Patikas earning the applause of the crowd here already because he's been involved in all the action. And this time the shot on the turn wide of the post. Certainly Patikas, having spoken to him, is very determined to prove to people that he does have a couple more years left at the top level. Here's Gensch. Playing it into Patikas. Good one-touch football here from Sydney United. And it was Paul Wade there pulling the shirt of A.T. Gensch. The free kick quickly taken. Popovich moves forward onto his left foot. Not a bad effort from Popovich off the upright. Still with Sydney United. And Arseni Popovich blocks the play eventually for the Canberra Cosmos. But a great passage of play by Sydney United. And the free kick taken early caused all sorts of problems. Canberra caught napping, really. And you can look here with the shot by Popovich onto his left foot. Beat the keeper off the upright. Orange comes inside easy, though. Ennish. Square again to Plesha. Coming out of the defence. And Plesha sizes up the shot. And Mike Frank for Patikas here. He goes down in the box and he's won a penalty. Well, Canberra will be concerned about that decision. The referee, Simon Mickworth, did not hesitate for one moment. Patikas uh, congratulated by his teammates. There was Patikas against Popovich. And from that angle, it certainly looked like Popovich was clumsy at best. Patikas down in the box. Penalty to Sydney United. 24 minutes into the game. And 1-0 to Sydney United. The goal scorer, the captain, Tony Popovich, from the penalty spot. And delight for the home fans here. And delight, too, for Tony Popovich. They certainly have worked hard for that opening at Sydney United. They deserve to be in front. There may be some questions asked about the penalty. No hesitation whatsoever from the referee, Simon Mickliffe. So Tony Popovich puts Sydney United in front with that penalty kick. I think that you're right, Mike. They should get the ball away from... Um, per, uh, Perinovic. The, Perinovic, the, the striker. Because... Well, here's, of course, I've just started the action now. Patek gets into the box. He's got behind Jason Dunn, and that's penalty number two. And I think there was no question there on this occasion. 
So Fatikas wins the second penalty for Sydney United. And Jason Dunn has been sent from the field. A red card for the Canberra defender. A deliberate foul, says the referee. Steve Mortone, the goalkeeper, disputed the decision. We can have a look at it again. The chip into the path of Patikas by Markovats. Markovats in there first. And Dunn just clattered into Patikas. No question of a penalty. The issue perhaps may be whether he deserved to be sent off here, Jason Dunn. Well, I think when you look at that replay, you can see it was a fairly deliberate challenge by Jason Dunn. So the game has turned again. So a very dejected Jason Dunn makes his way to the dressing room. Popovich against Mortone. And this time Popovich swaps sides. So clever play there for Tony Popovich. Sydney United go further in front. The goal coming after 56 minutes. Popovich the scorer again. Sydney United 2, Canberra nil. And a big smile on the face of the Sydney United captain, Tony Popovich. He's kept his calm on both occasions. So it will be Jim Patikas to get an early mark and a deserved round of applause from the crowd here at Edenzo Park. And full credit to Patikas. He's had many glorious moments in his career, but he'll enjoy this night, that's for sure. On the way to becoming a cult figure here as Manus Lamond makes his way onto the pitch, Jim Patikas off the field after 60 minutes of the game. A great pass by Ante Milicic. Here's Lamond in space. Can he come off the bench and score a goal? No, he can't. Well, Steve Mortain appeals for the offside. The linesman not interested. And Manus Lamond was found by the crossfield pass from Milicic. Plenty of room, plenty of time for Lamond. Onto his favourite left foot. He probably intended to bend it round inside that post. Maybe he would have been better off hitting through the ball, just getting it on target. Kelly now, overlapping. And the return pass from Musitano finds Kelly. He's won a corner kick, although he's hurt himself in the process. That was a firm tackle on Norman Kelly. He's gone in on Ante Morris there, Norman Kelly, and he's fallen awkwardly, really. And he could be in some distress there, Norman Kelly. An ice pack on the right knee. He hasn't gone off the field as yet. He'll have to take himself off the pitch to receive treatment according to the rules or he'll have to join the play. In fact, Kelly gets up and goes back into position. So Someone's been sent off, Mike, I think. Well, I'm not sure what's happened there. While well, I was watching that situation with Norman Kelly, referee in on that near post having a talk to some Sydney United players and you might be right Tony Pisano, Ante Moric now on his way off the field so that's a surprise Sydney United now also down to 10 men Moric did receive a card in the first half so a shock there for Sydney United. Will stay with the corner kick by the Cosmos. Away from Markovats. And Kelly cannot play on. He is in big trouble, Norman Kelly. He'll have to come off the field as the Cosmos launched the long ball towards the penalty area. The header away, though, by Rudan. Baxter in there. There's a fake drillage who headed that ball away. Rudan's still on the substitute bench. Here comes Paul D. The header down there by Kosh, just wide of the upright. A good opportunity there for John Kosh. The cross from D was nice and flat, and Kosh got up well. Lamond against Kosh, the bounce beat John Kosh. Can Manus Lamond finish this time? And he does so! Manus Lamond finds the net for Sydney United. What a relief for that man, Manus Lamond, and the supporters here. Sheer delight for the substitute. 
It's been a long time coming as far as Manus Lamont is concerned. He's had three clear-cut opportunities in this match. And he strikes his second goal of the season. He can afford a smile and a laugh. Mike Lyon certainly not laughing, but the bounce really deceived John Kosh. The ball just held up in the turf. In there, quick as a flash was Manus Lamont. And no mistake on this occasion, a firm finish to the keeper's right. 3-0 to Sydney United. But on the counter-attack, Sydney United make them play. Manus Lamond on the score sheet. The goal coming in the 72nd minute of the game. And here's Lamond again now. On fire is Manus Lamond. Milicic, Lamond has continued his run through the middle. And Lamond is found by Milicic again in space. And Lamond just off the post. Well, Manus Lamond is involved in everything. And on that occasion, beaten by the upright. Mike, Manus Lamond's a type of player that actually puts a smile on the, on the commentators' faces, on the people's faces. Look at this. How, how unlucky can you be? He's right foot this time. We'll have a good laugh tonight about it when he watches it. Well, the crowd coming alive here. They love this man, Manus Lamond. And here he is with acres of space. Popovich now wants to get forward. And the foul, was it by Baxter? No, says the referee. Play on. Well, the match has come alive again with Manus Lamond's introduction. And end-to-end -end play here. Canberra would love the consolation goal. Kuprashak back in defence for the Crows. Blokovic again. Look at the space here for Markovac now. It's Markovac into the penalty area. Back in cover is Kosh. And Markovac puts the ball wide of the post. It may have caught an awkward bounce just as he struck that ball. Robert Markovac. And it bobbled a little bit as he hit it, but he'll still feel he should have found the target there, Robert Markovac. Well, there is the full-time whistle from the referee, Simon McLeff. So, ultimately, a comfortable victory for Sydney United. Two penalties to the skipper, Tony Popovich, and a goal to the second-half substitute, Manus Lamond. A result which confirms their place in the top three. There is, in fact, the final score at Adenzo Park. Sydney United 3, Canberra Cosmos nil. Yes, emphatic victory indeed by Sydney United and a splendid sight down there at Adensa Park was the presence again of Jimmy Patikas, John, the place of many a conquest for him. Uh, the stadium has changed a little bit since he went away 10 years ago, but uh, he hasn't changed all that much at all. No, and, and the speed is still there. I mean, 32 years of age, the first thing you, that does go is the speed, but it's fantastic to have Jimmy back. He really is one of our favourite sons, isn't he? And to see him back and contributing to the league, and I think will make a huge difference to Sydney United, not only his personal contribution, but the effect he's going to have on the team. We mentioned the speed, Jimmy's always been able, had this acceleration ability to change pace very quickly and it's going to cause a lot of trouble to uh, defences in the league. He drew two penalties in this match, this was the first. A little bit of dispute whether it was or not, I feel in looking at it several times that it was a penalty. That ability to change pace very quickly. Uh, again, he's uh, caused Canberra problems, and I'm sure he's going to cause a lot of other teams' problems before the season's finished. His ability to run from deep into spaces and to be well served by the team, this brings the second penalty. And again, the speed of Patikas has deceived the uh, defender, who's uh, been, been caught out with uh, his second yellow, and, uh, which was, of course, a red card eventually. But I think it's these boys coming back now, Les, are going to have a, a big influence on the game. Everyone looks up to them, they grew up to them as their heroes, and now they're playing alongside of them. And I think he's probably the missing link in Sydney United, which put on a terrific performance against Canberra. The quality of their football was quite outstanding. I mean, for many people, they are among, if not the, certainly close to being the, uh, the best footballing side when they're on their game. This move uh, was symbolic of some of the stuff that they did, the pass to Milicic, the running off the ball by Manus Lamond. And just on Manus, I know I can be accused of bias because I, I love the guy as a, as a player, is that when he does come on, even though he does miss the chances, that something happens. Exciting, we've we've, we've, we've uh, emphasised this, it's important that we entertain the fans. And there Manus is, is that type of player. 
The result is interesting, John. Um, Sydney United uh, uh, doing the job on Canberra, who did that uh, five-goal demolition of more. Well, I think in Canberra's defence, we should say they've had a great run. And I, I, there's very few teams, Les, when you play midweek, can have good results on the Sunday, say the weekend before, midweek and the weekend after. And Canberra, who did play Wednesday, in their defence, I think, think that backing up again so soon probably took its toll on them. Still, these results are very unpredictable. Morwell beating Sydney United uh, just a few weeks ago on the same ground. Well, maybe everyone's saying there's the Canberra's a new team or Newcastle, but when you look at most of the teams, South Melbourne's a new team, Marconi's a, probably a new team, Olympic is a new team. And I think that probably does influence some of the, the up and down form of the various sides at this stage. All right,